Thank you to Warp for sponsoring today's video. So if you've been watching my MacBook videos over the past year or so, you've seen me use Warp as my terminal of choice. Now you probably know Warp as just a terminal, but recently they've been making some pretty cool changes that now make Warp capable of rivaling some of the other AI coding tools out there like Cursor or Claude Code. They even placed top 3 on Swebench above tools like Claude Code and Gemini CLI, as well as got a 52% score on Terminal Bench, making it one of the best agent-based dev tools out there. And with the industry changing faster than I can say the word cat, I think it's important that we try to adapt as fast as possible. So today I wanted to take you out through some of my favorite features of Warp and how you can use it to improve your own coding workflow. Now first things first, you can download Warp with the link I'll leave in the description for completely free so you have nothing to lose here by giving it a shot and even the free plan is quite powerful. Of course with the more advanced tiers you get a lot more AI credits which will come in handy. Now the first thing I want to talk about is the UI and overall user experience with Warp. Of course they have a bunch of different themes you can choose from to personalize your experience but the best part about Warp is how they kind of bring your terminal and coding workflow in the same place. Nowadays, and especially in the future, we're going more and more into a world where we have developers chatting with an AI agent, reviewing the code, and then deploying the code via terminal. And currently the terminal and the AI agent are kind of separated in tools like Cursor, for example. Also with some of the other AI tools, working on multiple projects at the same time is pretty much impossible. And unless you're working on a monorepo, then you're pretty much forced to have multiple IDE windows open at the same time, which then means having multiple chat windows open at the same time as well. And things can get quite messy pretty fast here. The Warp's whole idea was to integrate all of these things into one place. Something I really like about the user experience is that when you're trying to run some more niche terminal commands that you might not remember off the top of your head or maybe you need to do some scripting on a remote server but don't exactly remember the syntax you no longer need to open up a browser window to search stuff up instead you can achieve all of this inside of warp i find this to be a really nice touch since it lowers the amount of context switching you need to do and us humans are terrible at multi-threading so the more you can focus on the task at hand the better. Now we already talked a little about the agent mode, but let's go over the different modes you can use in a bit more detail. So here in the bottom left corner you can see that we're currently on the auto mode, which basically auto detects what you're trying to do by the different prompts and comments that you're giving to warp. For example, if I run the command ls, it auto detects that hey this is a system command and goes into shell mode. But if I run another prompt like how many letters are in the word strawberry it detects that hey this is a question and switches to the agent mode warp also supports voice input which is nice so if i just click on this button here and say something like hey can you tell me what the cat terminal command does it's going to pick that up and give us the output you can also add images as context so maybe you want to showcase the ui of another app and ask warp to help you replicate it or just give more context to your prompt maybe you're faced with an error then you can go ahead and do that and lastly about the different modes you can of course change the model that warp is using under the hood the default one is Sonnet 4, but you can change to GPT-5 or some of the other ones you see on this list. And currently there's no support for local LLMs, so if you need to do some development offline, then this might be an issue for you. Oh, and while we're at it, I wanted to quickly mention that by default, this help improve warp setting is turned on. And I know that a lot of you are really into privacy, so you can just turn that setting on and off here in the privacy settings. All right, now that we're feeling a little bit more warmed up, let's go over some real life coding tasks using warp. This right here is the e-commerce store that I've been meaning to finish, but honestly, I've just been procrastinating on doing it. It feels like I always have something more high priority on my plate. The idea is to have my own custom store for selling my own digital products like wallpapers, presets and LUT packs since all the other sites take anywhere between 5 to 10% commissions on sales just for basically hosting your product and handling payments. And that's just a little bit too much at scale so I wanted to build my own solution. Now when it comes to coding, the way you navigate to your project is a bit different than a regular IDE. As you can see, I'm currently in my project directory and say I want to view or modify a file, I have a couple of different options here. Obviously, you first need to locate the file you want to view or edit like any other coding environment. Then you can open it with a text editor like Vim or you can just use Warp to open and edit the file by clicking on the name of the file and then clicking on this open with Warp button. And it's going to bring up this Warp editor. Now, since most of the coding is done by the AI agent, there isn't any code completion here in the Warp editor. Anyways, as you can see, the e-commerce store currently has this guide section in the top nav bar, which was initially there to host some YouTube related info products, but I don't think I'm gonna pull the trigger on that just yet. So for now, 
I just want to remove the whole section and all the references to it. So I'm just going to tell Warp to remove the whole section and everything related to it. Now the cool thing here is that Warp notices that this is a bit of a more advanced prompt than the previous ones, so it actually presents this option for a plan use the O3 model. I think this is really cool that we can see what the agent is actually thinking before it goes ahead and does any code changes. So it analyzes the project and finds all the references to the guide section and presents the plan. Now looking at it, this plan is actually pretty in depth and it even tells you some of the lines that it wants to remove and it remembers to update the tests. To me this is looking good so I'm just gonna say yeah let's execute and after a while the whole guide section is gone alongside all the references to it. Also it gave me this nice summary of all the changes that it made in the end. By the way, for seeing what changes the agent is actually making, you have this dedicated code review panel here that is unique to Warp. So you can see all the agent's code changes right here alongside the terminal window, which makes it super easy to see exactly what the agent is doing. Removing the guide section actually presented another UI issue with the feature product section. Right now it looks a bit off with only three products on the front page. And I mean, the sizing is completely wrong. They're all hugging the left side of the component. So we have a bunch of white space here on the right, which I'm not really liking. Let's try take a screenshot of this and give it to Warp as context and tell it to center all the feature products. And this is pretty cool, you can see all the changes that it wants to make to the Tailwind classes. Now to me this looks pretty good, so let's apply the changes. To be honest, this isn't exactly what I had in mind, so I'm just gonna say Let's have some dynamic sizing based on the amount of products we have. So if you have less than four products, it should use a different tailwind styling versus if we have all four products. Now here we can see that it's going to add a helper function for determining the grid styling. And then in the rendering portion, it's going to swap out the hardcoded tailwind and replace it with this dynamic sizing, giving the length of the featured products array as input to the helper function and then mapping through the featured products array and rendering the product cards. Honestly, to me, this looks pretty good. So let's go ahead and apply the changes. And this is a pretty cool touch. The agent remembered to remove the unused product rig component now that it's no longer used. And here you can see the final result of the feature product section looking exactly how it should be looking without any weird white spacing and stuff and being completely dynamic with different amounts of featured products. Now, something that is really cool about Warp is that you have the ability to run multiple agents in parallel. On other AI tools, you usually just have a single chat window here on the right side of the IDE and you can't really do anything else while the agent is working. But in Warp, if you come up here, you can see all the tabs you have open. Currently, I just have one tab open, but we can open up some more by pressing Command plus T a couple of times. Now you can have individual agents running on each one of these tabs or or if you want to execute some terminal commands while another tab's agent is working, you can do that as well. So how this works is that now I can type on one of the tabs something like how do you do a for loop in JavaScript. And then on another window, I can say something like how does vtest differ from just and have them running at the same time. By the way, you can quickly switch between the tabs by pressing command on the keyboard on Mac and then pressing the number of the tab. So for example, if I press command plus two, it's gonna jump to the second tab. And up here on the right corner, we can see all the currently running agents. Next to the agent, you can also see the status of the agent. So if this has a green check mark, then you know that the agent has completed its current task. But if it has this red square, then it means that it's currently working. And then the last one is this yellow square, which means that the agent is currently waiting for your input on something. For example, it's waiting for you to review a piece of code or something. And here you can just click on the agent and it's gonna jump to the tab of that specific agent instantly. Another thing we can do is ask Warp for some ideas on what to build next, or if you're faced with a problem and you would like to have some input on how you could approach that problem, you can utilize the planning capabilities for that. Here I actually find the voice commands to be super helpful because you can kind of ramble your thoughts and Warp is going to create a prompt from that. So we could say something like, I'm trying to land a software engineering job in there of AI. What would be some impressive projects that I could put on my resume that a recruiter would look at and say, hey, this guy knows what he's doing. Now, these projects shouldn't take too long to build, a couple of weekends at max, and I'm going for full stack web developer roles. I have around two years of full-time experience with a couple of internships in the past. Now, I'm also super passionate about content creation, so ideally we could mix content creation with coding and create some projects of that. And let's see what it's gonna say. So we got some pretty cool project ideas and here's actually a good tip. We can see that it gave out a short form content planner as a project idea, which is basically a Kanban board, but it spawned the project in a way that is specifically made for short form content creation. And this is something you should be doing in your resumes as well. Even if it's a basic chat app or something, try to spin it in a way that, hey, this is a chat app specifically made 
for X, Y and Z people. Always try to make your projects sound a little bit cooler than they actually are. For example, when I was looking for my first internship, I had this project called Rate My Setup and it was basically a Reddit clone, but I spun it in a way that, hey, this is a website specifically for uploading pictures of your setups, and then you can rate other people's setups as well. And actually me and somebody who was interviewing me started bonding over this project because her son was super into like upgrading her setup and stuff. And in the end, I ended up getting an internship offer from them. So you never know what's going to happen if you just spin your projects in a way that sounds a little bit cooler than they actually are. Your project is not another AI wrapper. It's this revolutionary thing that is going to take over the whole world. Remember that. Another thing we can do is open up a project and just ask Warp to summarize what the project is about. This is super helpful when you're jumping into a new code base that doesn't have a lot of documentation, so you can get up to speed faster. For example, for the e-commerce store, Warp laid out the project description really well and even pointed out some possible next tasks for me, like hooking up Superbase tables for storing digital files, which in this case would be my wallpaper packs, adding some extra test coverage, etc. Now, before we wrap up, something really important I wanted to show you are the different settings for the AI agent inside of Warp. So if you click on your profile up here and go into the settings and then click AI, you will find the different settings for the agent. Probably the most important one you should be aware of is this command deny list, as well as apply code diffs. In the command deny list, you can specify commands that if the agent wants to use that command found in that list, then it'll always ask you first before executing the command. The apply code diffs is also pretty self-explanatory. Basically, you can choose whether or not the agent has the rights to apply the code diffs straight away or whether should wait for your approval first. I have it on agent decides mode because I don't want to be clicking around for every single small change but when it comes to bigger changes I want to personally review it first before moving forward. Lastly let's just go over some changes that if implemented would make warp even more powerful than it currently is. Like mentioned, currently there's no way to hook up a local LLM to Warp, which would be a huge benefit for people who travel a lot or people who are really into privacy. And also on kind of that note, it would be super nice to have Warp ask you first whether or not you want to keep the help improve Warp setting turned on or off. And lastly, maybe we could add some AI code completion into the code editor inside of Warp. Even though like 90% of the coding work is done by the AI agent, it's still nice to sometimes hop into the code yourself and for those times having a code completion would come in clutch. But yeah, overall, I really like Warp and as you've seen over the past one and a half years in my videos, I've been using Warp for a long time before we ever had any discussions about any partnerships or whatever. So when I had the chance to make this video in partnership with them, I was super, super excited. Now I'll leave the first link in the description where you can get 70% off off of your first month on Warp Pro by using the code LUKEMADE. And I'll see you in the next one.